A jury found Fiore guilty today on all counts of wire fraud and conspiracy. The U.S. government is accusing her of illegally taking money from her political action committee, campaign funds, and even a charity for a fallen officer's memorial statue, using it for personal expenses. Things got interesting this week at Michelle Fiore's trial when her daughter, Sheena Siegel, took the stand during cross-examination. Siegel admitted she might have written a check from her mother's pack to herself, something that, if true, would be a federal crime. And new tonight, our J1 Junk speaks with one of the jurors to find out how they came to their verdict. Dave, thank you so much for making time to do this. You're quite welcome. You were a juror on the Michelle Fiore trial. Can you tell me overall about your experience? In all my life, this is the first time I was actually seated on a jury where I actually got to uh, sit in the courtroom and I, I found it a fascinating experience. There was a lot of testimony and there was a lot of paper trails to, to follow up on. I know the jury only deliberated for about 90 minutes to two hours or so. Can you tell me what happened inside the jury deliberation room and if there were any holdouts? I mean, it went really smooth, I thought. I mean, we, we were kind of surprised. I mean, we were, we were concerned, too, because when he went in there, it's like we started, we did our initial vote and it was not unanimous. We decided ahead of time, if somebody disagrees with something, we're going to go straight to the evidence. Yes, we were there and had a lot of evidence to go through. But at the end of the day, of the seven charges, I mean, six of them were almost identical. You could you could swap the names and it was the same thing. So once you went to the first person and, and the first couple or two or three, it was a lot easier going to the last ones because the questions were all the same. The evidence was the same. I need to know what you thought about her daughter's testimony on the stand. It was kind of a shocking thing all of a sudden as a revelation to come out in open court the next day coming in and then saying, you know, all the testimony stricken. For me personally, I don't want to speak for other jurors. I mean, the conclusion for me at least was, was, was pretty obvious. And ultimately, you know, we decided unanimously that there just wasn't anything that rose to the level of reasonable doubt. I want to ask you also about Fiore's demeanor inside the courtroom and if you paid attention to it at all um, as a juror. Initially, especially early in the trial, she was a, a very upbeat when everything happened with the testimony that ultimately was discarded. Obviously, the demeanor was completely, completely changed. But when it came down to deliberations, that wasn't even a factor because we completely had to discard anything doing with that. A lot of the evidence that the defense presented was was of the good things she's done. But, you know, you can do a, a hundred good deeds, but if you do that one deed that's beyond what is acceptable, I'm sorry. It's heartbreaking for me to see that somebody would do that to take advantage of the situation.